if you're applying to Cambridge, you're going to have to submit an SAQ and in this video, I'm going to guide you through it. SAQ stands for Supplementary Answer Questionnaire and it's a questionnaire you'll have to submit exactly a week after your UCAS application deadline. So that would be 6 p.m. on the 22nd of October unless you're told otherwise. You'll get a link to the SAQ website via email about two days after your school sends your UCAS application to Cambridge. You might be wondering, what's the SAQ actually for? It's used by Cambridge to get more information about you as an applicant. For example, it asks you to briefly describe what you've covered in your courses already, so then the interviewers can know what to ask you during the interview. And you'll also have the opportunity to write an additional personal statement. The SAQ is divided in the following eight sections and in this video I'll go over each section. A lot of the stuff is just trivial and basic questions but a few things I think are worth going over through in detail. Note that you don't have to do it in one go because you can save it and just come back to it. The first section is called application type and this has basic questions such as do you go to school in the EU or are you currently at university? If the course you're applying for has several options then you'll be asked to indicate which options you want to study. For example for natural sciences you should choose either physical or biological. The next section is just a photograph. You should submit a passport style photograph. Make sure it is a nice photo because if you do get in it will be your ID card and you can't change it. Third section is basic details like what's your preferred name and where do you live, so basic stuff. Fourth section is your BMAT number, so if you are applying for medicine, then this is where you'll just put your BMAT number. The education section, you will have to spend a bit more time on. You'll be asked whether you have to submit a high school transcript, which is just a record of how you've done in school exams. Most people won't have to submit a high school transcript, but you can check if you do have to by looking at the flowchart which Cambridge has made. You can pause the video now if you want to look at it, or you can look at the link in the description. The actual submission of the SAQ will be in section 7 and not in this section. In this section, you'll also be asked to explain if you were able to study the subjects you wanted at school. So if you were not able to study the subjects you wanted, this is your opportunity to tell Cambridge that. The next bit is a bit longer. You have to fill out a table showing which A-level subjects or equivalent you've been studying. If you want to see what I did, then pause the video now and have a look. You have to give details of the main topics covered in each qualification and also the size of your classes. The interviewers might use this information to decide which questions to ask you, so keep that in mind when you're filling out this table. Finally, the last question of the section is whether you had any significant difficulties during your studies. You'll have 300 characters to talk about this and because of coronavirus I can imagine that a lot of you have something to say. Section 6 is for qualifications and you only have to fill out this section if you are doing modular A-levels or Scottish exams. Most people who are doing A-levels these days are doing linear and not modular A-levels, so most people will not be affected by this section. If this does apply to you, you need to fill out a table with all the AS or A-level subjects you're taking, and then also the exam board, and the unit codes for each module, and also if you've sat the exam, you need to put the marks you've got. If you did Scottish exams, you'll be asked to fill in the details of those exams. Okay, we're now at section seven, which is additional information. In this section, you can submit an optional additional personal statement. It can be up to 1,200 characters, and it's an opportunity to explain what aspect of the Cambridge course attracted you to Cambridge. Like I said, this is optional, and Cambridge says that not submitting an additional personal statement will not disadvantage your application. I think this is true. I didn't actually submit an additional personal statement and I still got in fine. I didn't feel as if I had more to say in addition to my UCAS personal statement and I didn't even know about this additional personal statement so I hadn't prepared anything and I didn't want to risk preparing anything in case it's not good. Anyway, that's what I did but of course if you feel as if you have more to say in addition to your personal statement, this is your opportunity to do so. The next question is, do you have anything you want to Cambridge to know in 600 characters? Again, this is optional and I left this blank. If you're required to submit a high school transcript, which I mentioned earlier, this is where you do so. And finally, we're at section eight of the SAQ, which is just the submission bit. In this section, you can review your answers and you'll be told if you've made any errors, like missed out compulsory questions. Make sure to really check your answers because if you submit it, you can't change your answers. Okay, so that's my guide to the SAQ. Cambridge has its own official advice document. Link is in the description. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, suggestions, ideas, whatever, put them in the comments. And if you subscribe, I'll get back to you ASAP.